What's up everybody on YouTube? This is a guide for protection paladin in uh, Classic WoW. I just wanted to talk about what I've learned over the years playing protection paladin and watching people who main the class who stream on YouTube and Twitch and uh, what I've learned from them. Uh, I know a lot of people are going to say the class isn't viable or especially optimal and I understand this but uh, I'm here to just talk about a lot of stuff that people haven't talked about and um, try and optimize the class as much as I can um, there's I mean there's a few guides on YouTube now uh, but the, a lot of them don't talk about uh, s stuff for raids really I mean a lot of people will say you know uh, you can tank five man dungeons as a paladin which of, uh, yeah you can but uh, everybody will say that raid, a lot of raids are impossible and uh uh, this is what I'm going to talk about, uh, but here's the next page. Okay, first I want to talk about the Deathbone set. This is a set that drops in Scholomance and was put in the game for Protection Paladin. In early patches, it's not as good, but they buffed it in later patches. So we know in Classic WoW that everything that drops will be in its 1.12 state. Uh, so you'll be able to get this in its best version in Phase 1. And you're going to use this to get um, defense cap. If you're trying to get defense cap, you don't have to, but this is a good way of doing it. And uh, this and a couple other best in slot off pieces will get you there. A lot of people say it's hard for Prop Paladin to get defense cap pre raid, and it's not. I mean, it's just as hard as a warrior. Um, and this helps out a lot. And the chest will stay best in slot till AQ40, I think. So. This set's really nice and it's a good thing to grind out right when you hit 60. Alright, uh, next thing. Okay, I want to talk about your rotation that you'll be using. Um, always have Righteous Fury up. I didn't put it up here, but always have Righteous Fury on. Uh, it's like your main thing. It's going to generate uh, all your aggro. you got to have Righteous Fury and you got to have improved Righteous Fury in the protection tree. Um, Next up is Seal of Righteousness. This is the seal that you're going to be using all the time. Does holy damage. Uh, judgment, of course, you're going to be judging holy damage. Uh, sorry, judgment looks a little off right there. Um, but uh, next is a Holy Shield. Uh, increases your block chance and does holy damage to the attackers. This is going to be your main way of gathering threat also. Uh, so judgment and holy shield, very important for threat. Uh, Consecration is really good for AoE threat. Uh, it's not going to generate as much single target threat as your Judgment or Holy Shield, but uh, it's always good to consecrate still, even on single target stuff. Just don't be using your max rank consecrate all the time. It's going to uh, be insufficient for your mana, and uh, you want to have uh, lower ranks of consecrate on your bar. I think I had rank 1, 3, and 5. Uh, something like that but uh just uh, if you can uh a rank one consecrate is always better to have out there than nothing and uh it's just nice to have these uh, lower ranks on your bar next is uh exorcism here you can only use exorcism on demons and undead this is only going to be i mean really relevant in axaramus um i think there's some demons in molten core uh there's a couple demons in there i'm pretty sure uh, but mainly this is for Naxxramas. Uh, it, it's real helpful for uh, Scholomance when you're trying to get your Deathbone set that I mentioned earlier. Uh, so, I mean, this still comes in handy. It's your only way of pulling a mob from far away, really. It has to be undead. Uh, so, Exorcism, still very useful, just only in certain times. Uh, I put Seal of Wisdom up there because you're going to want a Holy Paladin. Uh, judging this on the raid boss at all times to help generate mana for everybody uh, but the more mana you generate every time you hit you can do more judges so just always have seal of wisdom up and if the holy paladin does it you don't have to do it so you can judge light and get more threat okay next I want to talk about blessing of protection you don't have a taunt in Classic WoW as a protection paladin. Everybody's going to let you know this, uh, <laughs> but uh, 
you can use blessing and protection in a way as a taunt in certain situations. So if you target of target the boss and have a macro for this, uh, as soon as the DPS or healer pulls off of you and you have a target of target macro to bless and protection them, you can bless and protection them as soon as he looks at them pretty much and pull aggro right back to you just like a taunt. Because bless and protection is going to make them drop aggro and he'll come right back to you. I've done this plenty of times against uh, bosses and uh, it's just nice to have. Uh, Seal of the Crusader, uh, you're going to get from a Rhett Paladin in your group. He'll be judging this on the boss to increase holy damage for you and him. It's another thing to increase your threat and it's always nice to have. Uh, Blessing of Sanctuary, you're going to get deep in the prot tree, which is just a utility that you would bring into the raid because uh, holy paladins can get this, but they have to spec a certain spec to get it and most aren't going to be getting this. So, I mean, from what I've seen anyway, but uh, it's just a nice little thing that you're bringing and you can put it on your other tanks and uh, you always want to have it on you. So, uh, but next is uh, Sanctity Aura, which comes from a Ret Paladin. They get it deep in the Ret Tree and uh, it will increase your holy damage by 10%, which is increasing all of your threat moves, which is just really nice to have. Any, I love running with a Ret Paladin in my group as Prop Paladin. It's definitely the most efficient way to run as prop paladin in my opinion but uh retribution aura also if you had three paladins you could have devotion sanctity and retribution and these would all be helping you tank and uh it's just really nice so uh next is a strat that i got from a prop paladin who raided on lightbringer that i used to talk to when i was playing on lightbringer as prop paladin and he said that he used a uh, discipline priest to use power infusion to increase his threat right off at the start of the fight and i thought that was a really cool thing uh, i had never heard anybody else mention this so it's just uh another thing you can do i mean a priest is going to have to go 31 discipline to get this but uh it, i mean it's just a nice little tech that you can also add to your threat and uh, next is something that I'm kind of confused about and uh, I would just wanted to discuss with people is the Holy Might Stone. Uh, I, don't, I can't remember why I even heard about this. I want to say it was a Rhett Paladin DPS guide and uh, he mentioned this for Nax. And uh, the 400 Holy Spell damage and 300 attack power is really good. I mean, only against undead, but still... Um, and Axaramus is mostly undead anyway, so it, this this is just really nice if uh, it's actually usable or uh, it's, it seems too good to me, <laughs> so I don't know if there's a catch to this or what. I've never used this in Nax uh, or even I, I haven't rated in Nax as Prop Paladin, so this would be just really nice to know anything about this. Anybody knows. Um, if you want to talk about the Holy Might Stone, just let me know. Uh, I thought I would add it up here though because... Uh, it's just nice to have, I guess. Okay, uh, next I want to talk about some defensive cooldowns and other ways to maintain mana during a boss fight. Uh, first, I got Juju Escape up here. There's a couple different Jujus you can use. Uh, I just put Juju Escape because most people say Paladins don't have a old shit button to help stay alive. And uh, this is just uh, an extra little defensive cooldown you can use. There's also uh, Juju Power and Juju Flurry, which will help with the uh, threat. And, uh, but you can use a potion for the strength, uh, 25 strength, instead of the 30 strength that the Juju Power is going to give you. And then pop one of these for extra dodge, or the Juju Flurry for extra swing speed. Uh, it's all up to you. I just figured I'd put these up here because they help. And uh, next is Divine Shield, the uh, Paladin Bubble. Everybody knows the iconic Paladin Bubble. Uh, you don't want to use this as a tank uh, most of the time because you're going to lose threat. It's instantly, it's going to take your threat off. So um, you need a macro that will automatically take this off when you pop it. And it will wipe all your debuffs off and still help you maintain threat in certain fights. Uh, it's situational where you want to do this. Uh, it's just a nice little tip uh, that I've seen other paladins talk about and I figured I'd put that up here. 
Uh, next is real important, improved lay on hands. You get this in the holy tree. Um, it's going to make your your lay on hands have a lower cooldown and uh, put a buff on you for 15% extra armor for two minutes. This is really useful for hard hitting raid bosses. And I know people, some people are going to say, well, you could put this on a warrior. Uh, yes, a, a holy pally can totally put this on a warrior or a feral druid, but you're bringing your own and uh, yours is your own defensive cooldown for hard hitting bosses it's gonna want to, it's what you're gonna use as your defensive cooldown I mean I know uh, people say paladins don't have an old shit button but this is it I mean it's got a long cooldown but it's very useful and you can have multiple in one raid uh, so just always good to have improved lay on hands uh, next is Power Ward Shield. Uh, this is a priest move. I put it up here because I wanted to talk about how uh, when I was tanking on my paladin, a lot of priests didn't want to put this on me because they're not used to putting it on tanks, they would say. And I guess it's because warriors want to generate their rage so they don't have this on most of the time. And I, I understand that, but as a paladin, you don't have to worry about rage, so just the only time you wouldn't want this on is when holy shield is active so that the targets hitting you and taking holy damage but whenever holy shields not active you could have a power ward shield on you to help uh, keep you alive and uh, it's just a nice thing I figured I'd say uh, next is uh, innervate from a druid you all I mean you can always call out a druid in your raid for uh, extra innervate and it's gonna keep your mana going for the rest of the boss fight really nice uh, next is the uh, Greater Stone Shield Potion. Stone Shield Potions are always good for tanking hard hitting bosses. I mean all consumables, uh, this, this goes for all consumables. Uh, you want every consumable that you can get helps out a prop paladin. Uh, ones for just melee and ones for spellcasters also. All of them help. You want every buff you can get. Uh, and uh, Greater Mana Potions uh, for more mana also. Uh, pretty straightforward dark runes and demonic runes these are going to give you mana back uh, they're going to hurt you slightly so I wouldn't use them at like 5% life or something uh, I try to do these when I was at full life and I had a power ward shield on me I'd pop one to get some mana back um, then uh, the mana oil comes out during the AQ patch I think and this is really good for helping you generate more mana uh, you have to wait a while you know like phase three or so to get this but still really good I, I think there's wizard oil also which does spell power uh, don't co quote me on that but I, I think so and these are these are both good um, so there's that uh, before they come out you could put a sharpening stone on your weapon just to help out a little bit uh, so uh, the flasks I didn't put up here I mean that's the main thing for consumables and raids too is your flasks uh, most of the time they're pretty expensive but as a paladin all three flasks can benefit you you got the flask of the titans which is going to give you more health and you'll be using this one most of the time but if you're a off tank paladin which I mean most paladins would be it's very rare to see a main tank uh, paladin but uh, off tank paladins and raids could use the mana or spell power one for extra AOE consecrations extra threat on their consecrations um, so it's, it's situational and uh, I just figured I'd mention the flasks and how all three can help paladins uh, and uh, I guess I'll go to the next page now okay next I'm going to talk about some armor pieces that you're going to be using to replace your death bone set later on while raiding um, once you get to AQ40 you're definitely going to want to get the Avengers AQ40 set uh, this is best in slot for prop paladin pretty much till the end of the game uh, You're probably going to mainly have your death bone chess piece and probably the gloves maybe up until this point They're still really good uh, Until this point, but this is your best bet for best in slot later on for Nax Rams and uh, Now I guess uh, we'll talk about some uh, weapons Here's a list of uh, weapons that you'll be getting preparing for raids and progressing through raids. Uh, starting with the Flurry Axe, this uh, gives you an extra swing, chance on hit. And uh, this is nice for your seals, it's going to 
randomly give you extra seal proc really and uh, do more holy damage and it's a nice easy axe to get uh, if you don't want to farm out the iron foe which is next on the list and the iron foe is what I had on my protection paladin uh, it's a low chance to drop in on off the last boss in BRD but it is best in slot for tanks pretty much and uh, I mean I got it my third try I got really lucky on it I've seen other people stream who uh, have, were farming this and it took them like four days or something to get it so uh, it's just a random drop really low chance but really nice to have you want to put spell power on it you want to put spell power on any of your weapons it's going to go into your judgments and uh, give you more threat you always want the spell power uh, but yeah iron foe I mean uh, <laughs> it's got a nice aesthetic it glows like yellowish it looks paladin like to me uh, if you're a human you get the extra hit chance uh, with expertise and that's that's always good so iron foe definitely my favorite uh, for a pre-raid uh, next is some stuff you'll see in raids um, lock Amir from black wing lair is really good uh, this is on a, another prop paladins guide uh, who I will be mentioning in the rest of the video I'll be talking a lot about but uh, this is on his guide and uh, Lockamere uh, looks looks pretty good uh, for I can I can see why uh, I he didn't have this uh, I don't think but I threw it up here it was a mage blade from molten core it also has all the stats that you would want and looks pretty good for uh, prop paladin so uh, you're probably gonna make some mages pretty mad though uh, and same with this, this next one uh, the wraith blade uh, on his guide, he mentioned that the Wraith Blade does as much threat, I think, as the Thunder Fury. So, it's pretty much your best in slot uh, forever, is the Wraith Blade, other than Thunder Fury. So, if you can't get the bindings for Thunder Fury, uh, I mean, it's really hard to do, and takes a long time. Uh, it's really low chance, and you need two bindings. So, the uh, Wraith Blade, if you're doing Naxxramas, would be your best bet. Uh, if you don't have the Thunder Fury, but Thunder Fury puts the debuff that makes the target swing slower, so uh, it has that over the Wraith Blade. Uh, but I'll I'll talk more about uh, stuff like this in, uh, later in the video. Next is uh, Shields, the Draconian Deflector. You're gonna have this uh, pre-raid best in slot. You're gonna keep it for a while. Uh, when ZG comes out, the shield off Hakar is also very good, the Blood God shield. Uh, other than that, Bla Blackwing Lair, uh, Elementium Bulwark, if you're lucky enough to get this, this is going to last you till Naxxram is pretty much, uh, but also you can upgrade it in AQ40 uh, with the uh, Karazi Bulwark. Um, this is also on the other prop paladins guide. So um, when, I, when I link his video, uh, all this stuff and more will be in that video if you want to check it out. Uh, but something I wanted to mention was uh, spell power shields. You can uh, have a spell power shield on right before you pull the boss. It's going to make your judges hit harder and just macro to switch to your defensive shield right after. And you can switch back and forth uh, in between the fight to gain even more higher judge procs uh, from the spell power on your shield. Uh, I just figured I'd mention this. Uh, there's a couple of different ways you could go about mix matching gear for extra spell power and stuff too. But I mean, you can change your uh, weapon and shield out in the middle of battle. So. It's just nice to have that extra spell power off your first judge because uh, the first judge, the harder it hits, the best the, re the rest of the battle is going to go most of the time. So you want that first judge to hit as hard as possible and uh, a good spell power shield can help out with that. So I didn't put any of them up here, um, but you can always look some up. Okay, next I'm going to talk about some trinkets. Uh, the first is the blacksmithing trinket that makes you immune to fear for 30 seconds. Paladins don't really have a conventional way of breaking out of fear like warriors do. Um, so a good way to get around that is uh, trinkets like this. And also you can uh, divine shield bubble cancel, I'm sure, to uh, 
to, to get out of fear but this is just the extra way and uh, it's good for those fights with a lot of fear you know um, demons blood trinket you get from a quest it's going to increase your defense and uh, you can use this for getting on un uncritable uh, force of will from BRD I had this for a long time on my prop paladin it's a really good trinket uh, you're definitely going to want it for pre-raid best in slot and uh, then to upgrade these trinkets once you start doing onyxia you can get the onyxia head and turn it for the onyxia blood talisman uh, this is really good for getting uh, even more defense uh, it's a really good upgrade for the demon's blood trinket you, as you can see so uh, there's that and then uh, once you get into black wing lair the stylings uh, is best in slot for prop paladin for the rest of the game and uh, so you definitely want to get that it drops off the uh, loot pinata drakes I'm pretty sure uh, I might be wrong but I'm pretty, I think that's where it drops uh, the next is from Naxxramas the glyph of deflection this is a really really good trinket it's the best trinket in the game for you pretty much and uh, if you can ever get this as a prop paladin you are a beast uh, but and then right there at the bottom I put the Hakar uh, heart trinket it uh, it's a spell power trinket and I put that up here just to, to show you can mix match just, uh, all of these trinkets however you want really uh, I mean stylings and the glyph of deflection are definitely the best but if you're on a fight where you need more threat you can put this uh, spell power trinket in instead and just use that uh, but yeah okay uh, next I want to talk about some other prop paladins that I've watched on YouTube and Twitch that have kind of inspired me to try and optimize the class as much as I can and and bring it as far as I can because I know there's a lot of people who are closed-minded about it and just say you know warriors and feral druids are better I'm, there's no point in trying uh, prop paladin but it's not true and there's a small amount of people out there in the world who uh, actually put in the time to help optimize the class and a lot of the stuff that I've got right here I learned from them and I want to just give a big shout out to them and talk about uh, Killer Dookie one of the uh, only main tank prop paladins that I've ever seen and does it very well I mean if you go back and look at all his videos they're progressing through content fine uh, he tanked Gar he has a video of that uh, he's the only uh, paladin I've ever seen with footage of tanking Gar um, got the Thunder Fury himself uh, through his uh, you know main tanking and it's just really cool and uh, I, a lot of his videos are kind of low quality and low frame rate um, you know uh, bad audio sometimes I mean I know my audio right here is not very good either but uh, I feel like these are reasons maybe why his videos have been overlooked until now or something or people really don't care about prop paladin I understand that maybe that's also why too but there are people who do like me and I've been watching and I, I really think what he's done is uh, really revolutionized the class and helps optimize it and uh, I had to mention him and I'm going to mention him some more in a sec but uh, I w also wanted to give a shout out to uh, there's a guy named uh, Mosin I think is his channel and he raids as a prop paladin called the prop dream and uh, I watch him on twitch and if you go to any of his AQ40 videos it's very enjoyable to watch him uh, tank AQ40 as a prop paladin uh, he's an off tank he's not a main tank like uh, Killer Dookie but if you if you want to be an off tank uh, which is a lot easier to shoot for as a prop paladin Mosin's videos go to his twitch watch his AQ his Naxxramas and uh, Molten Core all, all of that you know he, he off tanks in all of them and uh, it's, it's really cool so uh, Mosin's channel I will leave a link down below uh, but back to Killer Dookie who is a main tank and uh, I learned a lot of this stuff from him so uh, I'm, I, I went and commented on Killer Dookie's videos because he mentioned 
that he has tanked every boss in a uh, classic and most people would say you know that a paladin can't tank four horsemen a paladin can't do the taunt swap this is what i hear on every video all the time and uh, i never see anybody talking about ways how to try and do this you know try and figure it out everybody just says oh it's impossible uh you can't do it but i i really don't feel like blizzard intended these fights to only have taunts i don't feel like blizzard sat down and did the four horsemen fight and said okay everybody's gonna have to have uh eight warriors who can taunt and if one taunt is resisted the raid wipes i i don't feel like they m designed it that way i feel like there's mechanics in the game to do these boss fights without a taunt um and killer dookie has actually sat down and done the research and figured this out if people would go to his videos and actually look at this if you if you really want to figure this stuff out uh, so I commented and asked him how he did this and I, I have screenshots of what he responded he, he gave me a very detailed uh, description of how he did this his English isn't very good uh, I mean it's not his first language it's, his English is okay uh, but it's understandable so um, maybe this is another reason why his, his videos might get overlooked or something but I'm here to try and spread awareness about his videos mainly I mean I, I'm not a youtuber this isn't for my channel I just want people to optimize the class and figure out how to do these fights that everybody says is impossible uh, so I'm going to be posting up on the screen now uh, what he said in in his uh, comments and it's also on his channel which I will be leaving a, uh, a uh, link to down below but uh yeah so here here's what he said about the uh four horsemen fight okay these are the screenshots of the comment that killer dookie replied back to me when i asked him how he did the four horsemen fight as a protection paladin and uh i really appreciated this uh i've been looking for probably a year and a half if not longer on uh how to do this any anybody to even humor me on this to theory craft away uh just anything you know and there's been nothing all you'll ever hear is it's impossible don't even try it. it's impossible what, what's the point warriors are more optimal uh you know and that's not the point the point is to try and do something that people say is impossible and to play the game the way uh you want to play it and if it's a way to do that uh then I, I don't see why not and uh this this really gave me something at least like a roadmap of how it can be done and that it is possible and uh, i'm not going to go over everything he says here you can pause and read it uh, but with the full horseman fight you have these uh, marks that go on you and they stack up to eight they do damage to you and they reduce your threat um usually a, a raid would uh switch these before they get to eight but he says this is key to doing it as protection paladin and uh, i know a lot of people are going to say that uh, you can't survive the eight stacks as a protection paladin um, but he says you can and uh, he says he's done it and i i'd love to see it i i believe that he's done it and uh, when classic comes out i hope he gets a chance to do it again it, and if anybody else out there wants to try this uh it's i would love to see it on stream and uh maybe this will get a conversation going at least of something and i mean it's it's something <laughs> uh and also i have the uh the drake fight that he commented back to on uh blackwing lair because this is also one that people say uh you can't do and uh it's just kind of it was always kind of a brick wall uh for uh strategies and uh rating for prop paladin and uh yeah okay well this video has probably went on for a lot longer than i expected so i'm going to wrap it up here and uh, uh yeah i just wanted to put this out there and just let people know uh about everything i know about this and uh show what killer dookie said and uh, I just wanted more people to talk about this and uh, 
try and optimize maybe what, what he says uh, you don't have to I mean you can comment whatever you want but you don't have to say oh this is impossible I mean I hear that all the time <laughs> uh, so if you want to whatever but yeah uh, just I would really appreciate more comments that actually talk about how to optimize this though or other strategies that they have to get this done with and uh, yeah that's that's about it and if you want to hear anything else about any other hybrid classes um, just let me know but uh, I guess that's it. Later.